Okay, g'day guys. So today we are talking about the uh, cable pullover machine. Fantastic machine, very underutilized machine in order to really gauge those lats and really dive into them. Um, fantastic potential uh, warm up exercise, but also a fantastic accessory exercise also. Right, the great thing about this exercise is we actually have a reference point for our scapula to be placed back and down on because we know that when we create scapular retraction and, and depression that will engage our lats and that is what we want to do when it comes to stabilizing our scapula so we can really activate those lats. So for those who don't know this is a very, very good lat exercise. Right, let's go into how we would set up for this exercise. First things first is we want to create a flat back. Now, how do we go and do that? Well, we know that our lats latch on, so pretend this is our scapula, our, latch, our lats latch on to the bottom of the scapula. So what we, are, and, and our scapula, this is over exaggeration, but our scapula sits on our back just like this. So if our lats latch on here, we want to try and pull them back and down. That will create stability through this working joint. When we do that, we're going to enhance the tension rolling through our lats. And as a result of that tension, we are going to create more, or we're going to accumulate more um, muscle fiber damage over a longer period of time. And we're gonna grow and gain more and more over a longer period of time at a quicker rate than say someone who isn't pulling their shoulder blades back and down. Also, it will help and develop your shoulders uh, stability and as a result of um, that other exercises and other body parts will really benefit so any shoulder exercise or any chest moving exercise will really benefit from the health of your shoulders created potentially through this exercise okay so setting up what we're going to do because we have the back here we are going to use um, this as a reference point so we want to have a flat back on the back here and we want to pull those, that scapula back and down to create a flat back and we're also going to jam our backside in right at the base of this chair here um, because that will be our two reference points. Now part of our acronym STEP is stabilization which we're doing pulling the shoulder blades back and down which will create our tension through our lats okay so <clears throat> that's s and t now e is execution what we want to do each and every rep we want it to be the exact same um, <clears throat> exact same form exact same hand position exact same everything so we get a really good gauge as to where we exactly are when we are performing the uh the the, the load and also the rep ranges and then we can track that performance which is p at the end so S for st stability, T for tension, E execution, and P perform performance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our shoulder blades back and down and then we're gonna wedge our backside in. Now what I would suggest because our arms have to go over our head, I would probably lock our arms in early. So pull your shoulder blades back and down. Now some have a plate loaded. We're lucky that we have a pin loaded uh, machine. Nonetheless, uh, I would lock my arms in first and then my shoulder blades go in second. So I could almost, with my hands, grab a hold of this bench, pull my shoulder blades back and down, and then wedge my backside. Now, where, where are we looking for this pad to sit? Well, <clears throat> when we are doing this exercise, we want to think that we're generating the movement from our elbow. So we're gonna be driving down from this point, down past our side, which our hands and our forearms will follow. So it is very much an, an elbow movement with the machines rather than say pulling down with our arms. So we wanna drive this force driving down and past our sides um, via our elbows rather than our hands. And we know that our full range of motion with the lats starts all the way up here, and finishes all the way back. So we're actually gonna to look to pull back past, which is why you can see that this bar is bent because it allows us to get past and get that full range. Where a lot of people go wrong with this particular exercise is that they get to where they feel their lats come on, but they don't get all the way down. So they get to about here rather than pulling all the way through. When you do pull all the way through, you're gonna feel a, a couple knots potentially at the bottom of, uh, or just above your lower back, but at the bottom of your back, just about there. That there is your lat really um, uh, uh, creating as much tension as pos possible or bunching right up. Um, and that's where 
we want that to be feeling. So again, <coughs> first point of call is set your elbows. So shoulder blades and then shoulder blades. So elbow set, shoulder blades set, then we're gonna push our backside and now we're in a nice, really good thoracic extension, which we know when we're in a thoracic extension that it promotes our lat activity. And as a result of that, we're gonna get the most out of our lats. Now we could even take this one step further and place our feet underneath our backside. However, if we do that, we're gonna lose our hip position. So I'd probably rather you jam your feet into the ground allow and push them back into the bench. So we create our two um, focal points or our, our pivot points, which are our flat back pivot point one and pivot point two is our, our backside up against the bench, okay? So, <laughs> Shoulder blades or elbows, shoulder blades, bum. Keep yourself nice and wedged in. Now from here, I'm, you could do this without your hands because we want to generate that force through the elbows, but you can uh, let your hands go lax onto the bar. But I'm gonna generate this through my hands, uh, through my elbows, and I'm gonna even bunch up my, my hands so that I'm concentrated only on my elbows. Now I'm gonna come all the way down, and remember, I don't wanna finish at this point, I wanna get right back and squeeze. So we're gonna come back down, up, Squeeze, up, squeeze hard, that's it. And bunch that up and you'll see and feel your lats come absolutely alive with this particular exercise. Now, <clears throat> there is something to be aware of. Well, first things first, we actually don't mind how much thoracic extension we enter in, provided that we have our two pivot points. Um, and the reason being is because we're not going to, we can't create momentum, right? So if we keep arching and keeping a big, tall um, chest, that's fine because we can't rock back, okay? If we start losing um, ourselves and start almost losing this arch and we start rolling forward and then sort of using um, our upper body as a leverage point, then we're in some strife. We need to pull it back, short the blades back and down, pin yourself in and drive with these lats. Um, <clears throat> number two is what we want to understand is that there's a skill element to this exercise and the skill element is the ability to keep your shoulder blades back and down but then get our full range of motion. So when we're in this position here, you might find that you get to this point and you get a big stretch and come back down, okay? We are looking to almost overstretch, so a bit of hyperextension and then pull through. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves with the hyperextension and, and reaching that little bit further, um, I want you to understand that we must keep tension. We don't want to uh, go lax through the lats and allow this joint to do all the loading. We want to keep that load through this point here, okay? Reach, stretch and load and pull back down. Now, if you can't do that in the hyperextended state, that's fine. Just go to where your natural range of motion will allow and concentrate on the bottom portion of this lift. So, um, if you can't get all the way back there, that's fine, all right? Let's just take it back where we still have control and then pull through, squeeze. Remember, elbows past our sides, squeeze hard and then up, slow negative and then pop. Slow, that was a bad example. And pop, there we go. And pop, okay. That there, team, is how to go about doing the um, machine lat pullover.